Hi, Krishna, dear devotees. My name is Krishna Dulal Das, and I'd like to welcome you all to our Sunday feast program at ISKCON Ottawa. It's the residence of our beloved Sri Sri Gorani Thai, 212 Somerset Street East. And uh, we've just concluded with the Arti ceremony, um, which was the offering of, of different elements to the Lord, flowers, water, fire, and uh, and praising the Lord with hymns and symbols. And uh, it's a customary way for Vaishnavas to, to greet the Lord and actually to spend time together is by doing kirtan. And uh, next on the program, we have uh, a wonderful speaker joining us. And following that, we'll have a little bit more kirtan to conclude the program. So before we go on to our speaker for today, I'd like to introduce our co-host, Mother Yeshika, to please make the introductions. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Once again, welcome to our Sunday Feast program. Today, we have our very own Guru Prashad Prabhuji as our guest speaker. Prabhu obtained his degree in engineering and worked for four years in India and Germany. When he first came to Canada in the mid-1970s, he first met devotees during his further studies in Montreal. In 1975, he met Srila Prabhupada and soon moved into the temple ashram. He got his Harinam initiation in 1977 and moved to Ottawa with his family in 1992. Since then, Prabhu has been serving at our Shishi Gornithai Temple in Ottawa and is a very malleable member of our congregation. I believe today Prabhuji will be speaking on the topic sin or offense. So I'd like to hand it over to Prabhuji now. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you. Just one more thing before we, we start with Guru Prashad Prabhu. It was actually a request that uh, perhaps if and any of you guests that are joining us, core members, if uh, I know that there are different names and we can't see everybody's faces on here, but if you can actually, if for anybody else that, you know, doesn't have their name on their screen, if, if you can put your name so that we can know who it is that we're referencing to or referring to or if there's a question afterwards if, if you're able to do that and there is a feature that you can do that it's not very complicated you go down to the uh, uh to, 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 to the participants tab and there should be an option to be able to rename i think you should be able to rename if i'm correct if not then we can we can reference maybe our technical specialist here Ilya Prabhu how to do that if you could change the names and for any of us who feel comfortable enough to, to be able to put on the camera that's always uh, very encouraging for a speaker to be able to, to have a face to, to be speaking to so uh, if you feel so inspired to do so then uh, then we can do that I would put the camera on myself here also here at the temple but there's only one camera here at the moment so one one at the deities uh, it's pointed at the deities but uh, Yes, if, again, if you feel so inspired to put on your cameras, anyone, that would be greatly appreciated. And, and then before we go on to Kripa Shepherd, I was going to ask, is there anybody here by chance joining us for the first time? Everyone has been here before? Okay, wonderful. Thank you again very much for, for joining us. Hare Krishna. Oh, over to you, Guru Prashad Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Krishna Dala Prabhu. Thank you, Yashika. It's nice to be with you all again. <clears throat> uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to see the deities and participate in the Kirtan. So, again, should there be anyone new here, I would like to also offer a special welcome to that new guest. So hopefully you'll find some information beneficial to you. Uh, even though you are coming here for the first time, should anyone join later on also. So <clears throat> you'll get to know more and more the more often you, you know, be with us. Let me start with a short um, prayer. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjavi 
ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ್ನ ಭಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ್ನ ಭಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರ ವನ್ನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನಾ ತೀರ ವನ್ನ ಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗುಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರದಾರಿ ಜಯ ಗುಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರದಾರಿ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜನರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನ್ನ ಚಾರಿ ಯಮುನ ತೀರ ವನ್ನ ಚಾರಿ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ರಾಧಿ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತಾಯ ಗೌರಣಿತಾಯ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತಾಯ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತಾಯ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತಾಯ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತಾಯ ಜಯ ಗೌರಣಿತ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ 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 ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಸೈ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋ ಸೈ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಸೈ ಗೌರ ಹರಿ ಬೋಲ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರಣಿ ತಾಯಿ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಶೀಲ ಪ್ರೂಪಾದ ಕೀ ಜಯ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದಿ ಹರಿ 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 ಬೋಲ್ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಲಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಶ್ನಾಧಿಪತಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಪೃಥ್ವಿರಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಚಾಲನೆ ವಿಶೇಷ ಸನ್ಮಾಡಿ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತರಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿ ಮಿರಾಂತಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಸಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರನ್ಮಿಲಿತೇನ ತಸ್ಮೇ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯಮೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪಕದಾಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪ್ಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀವತ ಪಾದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಗುಣರುಗುಣಾಥಾನ್ವಿತ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದನ್ ಸಗುಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತಾಂಶ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಾಂಗೀ ರಾಧೇ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತುರ್ಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇ ವೈಷ್ಣೇವ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಹಲೋ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಔಟ್ ವೆದರ್ ಆಡಿಯೋ ಅಂಡ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಐ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಡ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ 
Are you able to hear me clearly? Yes, Guru Prasad Prabhu. Everything is great. Thank you very much. Good. You know, this morning I was talking with a devotee friend. During the conversation, I happened to mention that I'm giving a talk you know, this evening for the Sunday program. Naturally asked me what the topic was about. When I told him, his immediate remark was, why would anyone talk about sin or offense? Doesn't seem to be an interesting topic. Would you not think of another one? I told him, and this has been already announced through our bulletin. And our conversation continued. He asked me, so how many people will be there listening to this? I said, probably on the Zoom between 25 and 30, and a few maybe on the Facebook. So he suggested, why don't you give the option, you know, to them say that well, they want to keep the same topic or go for another topic. So I said, okay. Then I chose the other topic could be peace and joy. Now, devotees, I want you to do a small thing. You all know how to use your chat feature, I hope. So using your chat feature, in the next minute or so, you should simply say one word, keep or change. Keep means the topic would be sin or offense. Change means the topic would be peace and joy. So how about that? Please, would you like to use your chat feature and... Uh, Please keep... To the chat feature because I'm going to ask Ilya Prabhu to make the uh, tally and tell me what the majority have chosen. I hope my suggestion was clear. Either to keep the same topic or to change the topic, peace and joy. <laughs> Uh, after a minute or so, Vilya Prabhu, you please kindly tell me. Please, Prabhu, that devotees would like you to keep with your topic. They're very intrigued to hear what it is that you had planned for us today. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's, you know, that's, I really appreciate your input for, that's also, because having a note, let me see what Ilya Prabhu has coming up with. Yes, Guru Prasad Prabhu, the, the chat says the same, let's keep the same, devotees would like to hear from you, what you prepared. All right, okay, I'm ready for that. Wonderful. <clears throat> you know, our natural tendency is that we want to be happy and we want to live health healthily for a long time. Actually, people do not want even to think about, uh, you know, the other aspect of life. You know, there is a four things which Bhagavad Gita tells us that one should be aware of. Janma mritti jara vyadi dukkha dosha nutarshanam. So, Krishna says one should be always aware of the, the nature of material existence, which is birth, old age, disease, death. So, this is the nature of this material world. So no one is exemption to this. Of course, it can vary differently. Many people live very happily for a long time, happily and healthily. And some may not be fortunate to that. So there are, of course, a reason for both of them. Why someone would live even in the material body happily and healthily for a longer time, whereas someone may not be. So you would have already guessed that is because of our previous activities. That brings us to remember that in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, in our true nature, we are all individual souls and we acquire different births. 
We are going through various different you know, cycles of birth and death. It has been going on. It is still will continue till we find a solution for that. And Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures provide the solution, what it is. So, the, whatever we experience in this life is because of our accumulated karmic activity. So, in this connection, you know, sin actually becomes very really relevant. Uh, there are various different um, details about what type of sin will provide, what kind of, uh, you know, future reaction. So also, something else also comes into play, that is whether some uh, activity was done inadvertently or willfully. So therefore, the uh, result will be depending upon the nature of it, the seriousness of it. And so various factors come into play. It is said it is very difficult to understand the complexity of the karmic reaction. So in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that one should be aware of that. Uh, what is karma? What is vikarma? What is akarma? So karma normally means uh, we people understand as karmic reaction, but karma also means the activity. And the activity as well as the intention behind it. Uh, Prabhupada gives the example that uh, a person uh, working in the army may kill many people in the, uh, in, the, in the battle front. He will be decorated with some special recognition. Whereas a, a civilian, if he even kills one person, even unintentionally, he will be reprimanded. He will be, be punished. So, of course, there is even that civilian killing, there is a various gradation, premeditated or accidental. So, therefore, accordingly, the, the punishment will vary. So, why is that that the person who killed uh, so many people in the battlefield is decorated by the government? Because he's not doing it on his behalf, he's doing it on the behalf of the government. So, therefore, he doesn't incur that punishment. He doesn't uh, get that punishment. He rather get rewarded for that. So the same activity, but the intention behind the activity will also make the big change. So karma is something very difficult to grasp. And the when you talk about the offense, offense is also a kind of uh, improper behavior. Right? So, offense are typically against something which is worthy of honor and worship. So, we talk about offenses typically. We all know about the 10 different types of offenses, which is we recite very often, at least we should, we should recite if possible every day. When we chant the Hare Krishna mantra. So, because the mantra is a, such a holy entity, actually a person, we call him Harinam Prabhu. So, we give the same significance as Krishna because Krishna and his name are not different. So, anything associated with Krishna, name, his form, his attributes, his pastimes, and anything related to him, his devotees. So are all of same sacredness. So therefore, we should be very careful when we are dealing with this. So uh, any inappropriate action or thought against that will be considered an offense. So of course, devotees, you know, do not, uh, <clears throat> they are very careful about uh, you know, when it comes to dealing with uh, such items, you know, Tulsi, for example, even if the Tulsi leaf is on the ground, we don't, we just very carefully pick it up and then place it somewhere. Either we put it on our head or we place it somewhere. So we are very careful. Both are in one sense, sin as well as, I think they are 
improper behavior. And uh, I searched for this because I was intrigued myself. You know, what is this thing? What is offensive? How, how are we going to find out? So I spent a bit of time going through the you know, different um, um, books as well as doing some Google search. And uh, my conclusion, I also later on confirmed with some senior devotees. So my understanding was what I'm sharing with you. <clears throat> it is not you know, comprehensively explained anywhere to my knowledge so far what I've looked into. And if someone happened to find, please share it with us. There's no single place you can find a comprehension. A discussion on what is sin and what is nothing. But they both are improper behavior. Okay, so in, in fact, one devotee told me that uh, uh, offense is a special category of sin. So, uh, and there he said that the devotee only explained to me that what is worthy of our honor and respect, okay, if we do anything improper towards that, that is an offense. Okay. Sin, on the other hand, uh, some type of sin, we know about sinful activities, which we are, all the devotees are aware and they are told to avoid that. Primarily, is, you know, no meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit connection and no gambling. So these are all sinful activities. And here also, some of these sinful activities will impact others and some may not. For example, if a person, uh, a single person in his own room, he get drunk, you know, and uh, he doesn't go out or doing anything stupid and he stays. And he actually still commits a sinful activity, although it doesn't impact others. On the other hand, if a person uh, is involved in gambling, especially some kind of a Ponzi scheme, if he cheats people, you know, that is, others are impacted by that. Uh, meat eating, for example, there's no question. Meat eating definitely involves uh, you know, killing of another entity. Um, so that is the higher grade of sin when other, other entities are involved. So therefore, the, the type of consequence will be also different. So improper behavior, in other words, is not, it's a no-no. Should be completely avoided. So whether it is sin or offense, it doesn't matter. Both have to be avoided. So that is the gist of uh, the, um, the uh, sin and offense. Now, why should we get to know this at all? You know, primarily, as I mentioned, to avoid the consequences. But more importantly, the a tendency for us, we are already in the material world. So if you stop and think about it, why are we here? Because this is a temporary place. It is not our permanent. We cannot be here for too long. You know, 80 years, 100 years, whatever. Some people may live to 120 years, but there is a you know, limit. Um, I'm not talking about some very exceptional personalities. You know, there are certain uh, Chiranjeevis. It is understood that uh, Hanumanji is still there. And uh, but we ask, uh, she is still there. So there are certain personalities that are still there. We cannot recognize them, but they are there. So we are not talking about, we are talking about generally most of us anyway. So uh, we are here because we left our original home. Robert coined this term, back home, back to God. So what does it mean? Robert is saying that this is not our true home. We are here in transit. We are passing through various different journeys in various different species. And in fact, for new people, it may be very startling. You know, the scriptures say there are 8,400,000 species of lives. Okay. The plants and, uh, and those which grow out of the earth. The aquatics, which live in the uh, water, uh, the birds, the reptiles, and, and the insects, you name it, all type of uh, different species, uh, they all have these bodies, the individual atma, which is very, very minute. Okay, So that atma, which is 
part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. That Atma has to take a body. And then through that, it progresses. It is said, for, except for human beings, other beings, I'm talking about um, in this other realm, in the, in the, taking the planet Earth, okay? I'm not talking about material realm, also involves you know, the uh, higher planetary system that is also part of the material realm. For example, the, the different uh, devas who are in charge of various um, uh, universal administration um, responsibilities like uh, Varuna, uh, Agni, they are also uh, um, personalities, but they are higher of nature, higher nature, they are demigods responsible for certain that they have their own time period, how long they live. But um, talking about uh, earthly planet, so we have already, you know, here itself we can see so many varieties, varieties of species of life. So we have gone through all this. And these, they, have, they don't incur so-called sin because they behave according to their nature. Okay, according to nature, they behave. So they don't uh, make too much a distinction. They know this is the eating. Okay, this animal is the food for the other animal. So it will go and eat, uh, for example, a wild animal meat, any other wild animal which it can uh, you know, attack and uh, kill. So for them, there is no sin. But for human being, who we are provided with uh, um, the sixth sense that to do the right thing and the wrong thing. The right and wrong, you know, is being taught to us. People inherently know what is right, what is wrong. It may be possible that some people may not get fully educated in that, but to harm other being is not the right thing. Or to talk even harsh words is not the right thing because we affect someone else's feeling. So uh, the hurt could be at physical, it could be also verbal and mental. Okay, which is causes uh, uh, anxiety for the other person. So any type of such improper behavior, uh, you know, is not recommended. It should be avoided at any, you know, because it brings a karma. Now, we are here because we decided that somehow it happened that we wanted to enjoy independent of the Supreme Personality of God. The Shastras, we understand from the Shastra, we are eternally uh, part and parcel of the Supreme and our nature is in relation with the Supreme. So when we think ourselves independent and with the idea that I want to enjoy, so then the karmic action actually becoming you know, effective. Because to enjoy means that means we have acquired a sense of uh, ownership of things which doesn't belong to us. If you stop and think about it, we, we routinely do that. We don't even think to, you know, second, second time. We happen to pass by a nice grove, you know, at least as children we have done, so we have gone and just pluck the fruit and then try to enjoy that, even though it may belong to somebody else. But in the same way, we are using the material resources uh, as, as human society as a whole. So we are exploiting the material resources for our own. Uh, just being part of in the society itself, you know, we are in some way cooperating even uh, unwillingly with what's going on and what Prabhupada calls as Ugar Karma. Special uh, corporations, they either they uh, you know, get rid of the forest for the sake of the wood there or uh, for whatever, maybe some um, deposits are there, some mineral deposits. So they may do that, they may cut down so many thousands of trees uh, for the purpose of so-called economic development. So that, that itself is also a uh, big um, exploitation of the natural um, resources. 
uh, it could be you know exploitation at a lower level between one individual to another individual. But nonetheless, the tendency to enjoy independent law is actually the root cause for us to continue in the cycle of birth and death. So how to uh, get over this tendency? So the method is also given to us. Okay? That we have something called, the guidelines are given to us in the form of various different um, um, uh, sastras. We also have the Niti Sastra. We may not hear that that often, but the Niti Sastra is given by typically by Manu. Manu's Niti Sastra is known. So that in, in our so-called daily life, you know, even if you are not focusing on devotional service at this time, even in daily life, how to behave as a civilized uh, person, a member of the society. So the Nishti Sastra is there to give us this guidance. So it says the, the role and conduct, for example, of a student and the, the conduct of uh, the housewife. As a wife, as a mother, you know, she has different responsibilities. So she has to carry out those. And the role of a, a husband and the father. The father also has a role as a father and as a husband. The children also have their role. So the same way, uh, different officials within the society, even the king, the king has big responsibility. He has his own code of conduct. So king also cannot do everything uh, at, his, at his whim. He's also to follow. So the Niti Shastra provides those things. But more and about this, we are primarily concerned as you know, devotees that our aim in, in fact is to finish off, you know, if possible in this life, to finish everything and go back home, back to Godhead. This Prabhupada has been very, uh, very much, he is interested more than us, just like Krishna is interested more than ourselves, Krishna is more interested in our real well-being, that is, we, we go back home, back to Godhead. So that is our true home. That's where we belong. And we are not, we don't belong to this material world. Some of we have come here and then we are struggling. So Krishna makes so many different arrangements for us to go back home, back to Godhead. So through great rishis, you know, we've been reading about uh, in the Canto 3, how the creation took place, how the, uh, you know, through Swayambhu Manu and eventually through the great sages, how living entities are given various different um, you know, opportunity to take uh, human birth. And from there, uh, they can go back home, back to Godhead. So uh, through these great rishis and many of the rishis has given us different scriptures. Uh, Lord actually gave the Vedas through Brahma. So Brahma actually um, provided the Vedas and uh, the great Rishi, we had the Vyasi compile them into four. Originally, it was one big you know, mass of uh, information, which uh, Brahma, the, with the Veda Vyas, great Veda Vyas, he um, compiled into four different. And then subsequently, there were um, Purana Upanishads and Puranas. And the Puranas are given by again by Veda Vyas. Upanishads have been by different other sages. Uh, and then, uh, most importantly, Ved Vyas gave us the Bhagavad Puran, Shiva Bhagavatam, right? And he also gave us the, the Bhagavad Gita uh, through uh, the great uh, epic Mahabharat. So Ved uh, Vyas is, is a very, a very unique place. So actually he is the literary incarnation of the Lord, so therefore it's not surprising he gave us so much. So you can see the Lord has provided us some, uh, all such information. Now, on top of it, uh, by the, the arrangement of the Lord, there are authentic sampradayas, and we are know about, uh, uh, definitely about our sampradaya. We have also some idea about other Vaishnava sampradayas as well. You know, we know about uh, Rudra sampradaya a little bit, we know about Sri sampradaya, and, um, also something about Kumar Sampradaya. Ours is, of course, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. 
that we need should, we should know more about our own sampradaya. Uh, the the idea is somehow we get linked up with this because without sampradaya being a fleet of sampradaya, the the mantra which we receive will not be fully um, beneficial to us. Prabhupada said, yes, you can always chant Hare Krishna mantra. You know, definitely there'll be benefit. But to realize full benefit, there has to be a reciprocative service, service to the spiritual master. And through service to the spiritual master, we actually um, fulfill another obligation. Because see, the spiritual master gives us not only the mantra, he gave us the, gives us the knowledge. So if, uh, all of us came to know whatever we have learned so far, is it by the grace of uh, Srila Prabhupada? And of course, Prabhupada himself attributes everything to his spiritual master. And like this, you know, it, through the parampara, it reaches to the Lord. Uh, so we have obligation in that sense, not only to fully um, benefit ourselves, uh, using these scriptures and also help others. Okay. And this is in this sense, we are cooperating with Srila Prabhupada in his mission to expand his own spiritual master's mission. And this way, ultimately, we are, um, we are all serving the mission of Srila Mahaprabhu. See, uh, we all again know this for sure. When Krishna appeared, if he said, first you surrender, then I will take care of you. Then I'll take care of you, I'll provide everything. Okay, don't worry. And he's also said that if you think of me always, you know, if you think of me all the time, you don't forget without forgetting, then I will provide you yoga and chema. That means I'll provide you what you lack and I preserve what you have. So Krishna has given so many, you know, very instructions in Bhagavad Gita for us to think about and to act on. And um, whereas Krishna when appeared as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became such a magnanimous uh, an avatar, like Rupa Goswami described him as Namu Mahavadanyaya. So the Mahavadanyaya means, uh, you know, such magnanimous, which we haven't seen earlier, before Mahaprabhu. So Mahaprabhu simply said, it's the highest thing one can achieve. You know, the Krishna frame is something which it's not easy to even to grasp, you know. We, may, we talk about somewhat very easily, but really, you know, it's not something which uh, uh, even great rishis are not able to fully comprehend. Now, how is that we are able to appreciate that? It's simply through the mercy. It's because of the mercy. Mahaprabhu's mercy become manifested through the parampara, through down the parampara to Srila Bhaktivana Thakur, Gokusa Dasmata Maharaj, and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, and, and through the Prabhupada. So it is, this is simply given to us, like, you know, just as a gift, please take it. Okay, so that is something very, very amazing. In that sense, we are all, all very, very fortunate uh, to be at this period of time uh, during or right after Shri Prabhupada's, you know, um, you know, present in this material world. So to take benefit of, it's just a matter of being a little bit interested and then continue it on a regularly. The, of the, as much as we possible, we try to associate with um, the other devotees. Of course, currently we are doing it only, you know, online. Hopefully, very soon in, in next couple of months, things will definitely improve. So we will have actually opportunity to be again get together in the temple and have, have a nice kirtan and uh, kata and everything. Hopefully, we'll be able to do that. But the regular activity of chanting and offering uh, 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 daily to our deity at home or even the picture. So and taking it as a prasadam, and this another one, when you talk about sin, what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that if an item which is 
prepared for one's own sense enjoyment and you know forgetfulness of Krishna, uh, that is actually tantamount to eating sin. And Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, why devotees? Because devotees are are exempted because they prepare anything as an offering to the Lord and they accept the prasad. After offering to the Lord, they accept it as prasad. So therefore, they have the benefit of prasad. And if a person, for whatever reason, it doesn't do that, then not only it doesn't get prasad, it gets you know, involved in karmic activities. So that actually is considered sin. Eating without offering is considered sin. And uh, <clears throat> Uh, I was reflecting on that. You know, if you are not making progress you know, on a daily basis, what happens? And if you, are, if you are, for some reason, we got a little disconnected, then the tendency, the material energy is so powerful, it can actually derail us from our path. And that's a big, big uh, setback. Because once the derailing happens, then the mind or the modes of nature is much more, they are powerful. And Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, Devi Asha Gunamai Mahamaya Jorthiya. So it's very difficult to overcome. It says, Tarantite. So that how you know, the material energy is so powerful, how the devotees are able to survive you know, in this influence of the material energy because they are continuing on the path of. Uh, devotional service. The devotional service actually gives them that strength to withstand. So when devotees go around during Bhaktisha with Harinam, they see so many things on the street, but they are not attracted by that. Why? They have already taken the, they have got the higher taste. So once a person has got higher taste, then naturally he is not interested in anything of much less significance. Uh, so um, but nonetheless, you know, we, are, we may be still susceptible for other things which we are, we are not fully aware of. So uh, till we come to the point that what matters is only the holy name and service. You know, and the more we uh, engage in this time-wise and with the, you know, uh, with love. So we may, in the beginning, we, it may not be as much. Uh, but what happens when we start practicing this, when we start doing things for Krishna, even as helping a mother advanced devotee. So in, very often that's what happens. We, when we come first, we do not know really you know, what to do. So some the devotees who are already there who have practiced a number of years, they tell us, we do this, we do like this. So we try to please them. We try to work with them and we follow their instruction. So like this, then what happens? Krishna actually within our heart, his presence, he notices that. So therefore he gives us higher understanding and Krishna already starts reciprocating with us. So the more service we do, the more relishable it becomes. Then we get into the uh, regular path of carrying on our devotional service. So the idea is the continuity. So if you don't continue to do this, and even a little bit of slack will actually cause some setback. And if the slack is for a longer period, it becomes even more difficult to get back to. So that is why Prabhupada always said, stay in the association of devotees. Do your sadhana properly. Stay in the association of devotees. Staying in the association of devotees actually gives us protection because we will minimize uh, you know, our interaction with outsiders, people who are not inclined for devotional service because everyone carries certain vibe, right? That vibe can, it can impact us if you are not strong enough. Like Prabhupada gives the comparison, you know, the, uh, when you plant, you know, the creeper is very fragile. So it has to be protected with proper fencing around and the proper supporting other structure, either a pole or another tree, which is stronger. So the creeper can you know, grow around it and it has to have the support and it's also protected by you know, other you know, uh, entities and animals coming and disturbing its growth. 
So therefore, the protection should be there and the support should be there. So the protection we can get in the association of devotees and the support is our own enthusiasm when we properly do that uh, with the right mood. So that will actually help the, the devotional creeper to grow further and further. And staying with this example, we should also avoid or uproot any kind of weeds, you know, when we water the uh, sprout and when it, the, the, uh, the um, creeper and the creeper grows because of watering and naturally already there is some uh, nutrients there in the, in the earth. So the weeds also will come up. So we have to be careful to remove the weeds and to keep only the, uh, the uh, creeper uh, you know, fed. So by removing weeds, removing the weeds becomes a very important task in itself. You know, people who are gardeners, they know that. You know, <laughs> if you are spending one third of the time taking care of the um, the proper plant or a bush, uh, but two thirds of the time you are spending in removing the weeds. You know, make sure that weeds are not. You know, even if you keep on, the weeds will naturally come. You know, nobody wants the weed. The weed actually there. It's there. Maybe if you remove, you know, you've seen how dandelions are actually a lot more. I found this this year. Maybe I'm having the same feeling every year. Oh, this is a lot more dandelions. Maybe, maybe not, but at least it appears. Every time I remove, I see there's some more dandelion there to be removed. So uh, they come because they float in the air. You know, there's so much dandelion, you know, you can't help the you have to keep on removing that. So the idea is we have to do that as well. So we, when we do this, then the creeper has the chance to properly grow and as Prabhupada says that eventually the, the devotional creeper will go and pierce this material you know, covering and then it will go reach in the Goloka and then we'll go and rest at the spit of Lord Sri Krishna and that will be the perfection of having the devotional creeper, ultimate shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. So uh, the, uh, we're talking about uh, starting with the sin and the offense. So they have to be very, very, they have to be very careful about it. You know, any um, tendency to criticize is, it is actually a, is a big no-no. Even if it comes up to our, you know, you have to bite your lips and keep it quiet. You know, because there is a way also to deal with, you know, if a, person is inconvenienced or whatever, go and ask for some clarification or explanation or politely point out you know, how uh, the other devotee, whatever he did, uh, impacted you in a very polite, uh, polite manner. Uh, because if it is bothers you, that's also not good. So if you are capable of digesting it and then not to make anything out of it, that's fine. But if it disturbs you and if it you know, makes you feel uh, you start thinking about it more and more, and that's not good. So you have to find a solution for that. So there's a way of dealing with uh, also, in, and if uh, one can always get help from another senior devotee and go and ask, what should I do in this given situation? Because taking independently and dealing with that, if you are not mature, we may make it even more difficult for us and maybe for someone else. So that is why it is said that we should have uh, opportunity. We should make, make the opportunity available to talk with. This is one of the instructions in the um, Upadesha Amrita, that one of the exchanges is actually uh, um, revealing one's mind and getting counsel. So giving counsel and getting counsel and revealing one's mind as well. So, of course, that one has to decide for oneself with whom the person feels comfortable to uh, talk about because it's not easy, you cannot reveal everything to everybody. So, therefore, you have to be um, discreet about how you want to approach, whom you want to talk to, and how you want to have the discussion. So, being careful about what we do, what we say. You know, it's very, very significant in this context. So, because uh, the 
offense is directly felt and the Lord is actually doesn't appreciate that. Okay. Sin he can tolerate, but offense no, <laughs> the Lord will not. So, so what's the result of this offense? We will lose taste for devotional service. So that is something which we should be aware of. So if you lose taste for devotional service, if you are careful about our own state of mind and our own how we go about, we find the difference in from one time period to next, we should question, why is it I'm not as eager as I was? So this you know, will help us to self-examine. Am I doing anything wrong? And maybe I should uh, correct it. So when we approach this with the intention of uh, self-correction, then we will find no, because ultimately, you know, Lord Krishna knows our own intention much better than anyone else, right? So he knows our past, present, and the future. So we seek, you know, Krishna's help and prayer. And prayer, you know, we do prayer mostly using the uh, various different um, shlokas or songs, prayerful songs. But one can also pray very intensely between with the Paramatma. Or if you happen to have the deities or picture, you know, with the picture. Can we, you know, all your feelings, because Krishna says he is our Suhurdam Sarvabhutana, he is our best friend. Okay. And we may not remember that often, but it also helps to remember this. Krishna says, Bhoktaram Mekitanam Sarvaloka Meshwaram. Sukhrdam Sarvabhutana Yatvamam Santim Rechati. So, Krishna says, you will achieve peace when you know three things. You know, Bhaktaram Yagyata Pasam. So, I am the supreme enjoyer, the supreme proprietor, and the supreme friend and benefactor. Supreme friend and benefactor of not just human beings. Supreme friend and benefactor of all Sarvabhutana. So, he says that. Uh, he doesn't limit it to human beings. So he says the Sarvabhutanam to all living entities. For him, there is no distinction. We are all his part and parcel. We may be having different body. So one may be in, in the body of an elephant, one may be in the form of a, the body of a, of a bird. But that is only transitory. Eventually, we are all, when we go back home, we are all into the spiritual with, a, with our own specific role there. So, uh, if we have the intention of, uh, you know, talking about how Krishna can resolve, because he is the supreme friend for everybody, we can actually pray to him. Krishna, you know everything. You know everything. I simply couldn't figure out what went wrong here. What did he do wrong? Please reveal it to me in some way so that I can correct it myself. So that attitude, then right there, the attitude of surrender is there. So when we do that, with the idea of, um, you know, uh, giving Krishna's help and uh, in that uh, that mood of uh, eagerness to do the right thing and to uh, at the same time to also ask for uh, forgiveness. You see, when it's very common, you know, in, uh, particularly I heard in the in the Christian uh, tradition to repent and to pray. They actually, they go kneeling on their you know going on their knees and they pray. That's a very, very wonderful aspect. That's supplication. We yeah, actually supplication, that, that's the word I think it is used. Through supplication, that means I cannot figure out what went wrong. I, I'm lost simply, you please guide me. Well, just, you know, that's what Arjuna also did, isn't it? Is it Krishna, I do not know what is good for me. I can't decide. So now I have a soul surrender unto you. Please instruct me, right? Then, of course, Krishna started giving the proper you know, instruction and telling him what is what. So, in our case, you know, Krishna also will help us through not necessarily directly, we don't, we are not in that category of having direct association of Krishna at this time. But nonetheless, uh, because of our uh, you know, intensity, Krishna will actually help us. So, the idea is. Uh, uh, Fundamentally, that we don't want to do anything improper, which actually becomes a setback in our 
our own spiritual uh, you know, progress. After all, ultimately what we're trying to do, you know, coming into Krishna consciousness and doing all these practices, our intention is to go back home, back to Godhead. So that is our intention. So we try to take as much help, as much guidance to accomplish that. And uh, the other thing is that when we, when we observe say, you know, certain practices like, you know, fasting on uh, EKLC and on fasting on a very special, uh, you know, occasion like Janmashtami and uh, about Purnima. The idea is that we don't indulge, you know, at least for during that period, you know, in too much of uh, eating. So the time, a lot of time is spent for, you know, preparing and eating. So when we minimize that, then that time we can spend in reading books or in chanting in another way, which is much more beneficial. This way, slowly what happens is when we get, we get ready eventually to minimize, like Prabhupada says, you know, food must be there for sure. One has to keep oneself healthy, just enough to keep the body and soul together in a happy, you know, healthy condition. So that is the, otherwise the, the time will be spent in, you know, in so many different ways. And he said that if you are not in contact with Krishna, we are really in contact with Maya. The material energy is always there. So the material energy is ready to exert and only shelter for us is chanting a Hare Krishna mantra or doing any other devotional service or um, particularly in the association of devotees. So, and if you want to maintain, you know, that environment of having a nice association and um, conducive um, environment, our mindset, all these things are enhanced by doing the proper thing. And by doing anything improper, obviously we'll have the negative result. So it becomes a setback. So we don't want to put hurdles in our own path, would we? So why would we do put hurdles in our own path? We should rather remove existing hurdles. So therefore, in, this, in that sense, whether it is sin or offense, I have to avoid them because nothing is nothing is belongs there for us in our in our view. There is no place for sin or offense. So both are equally should be avoided. Uh, so I would conclude saying this, um, although the topic sounded like, you know, something very intrigued, uh, finally it boils down to this, <laughs> avoid it any cost. So all these things to say that, you know, avoid it any cost. So, but then what else to do? So uh, if you can remember this, um, our primary purpose is to minimize the obstacles and minimize the time frame for us to fully get back in, in whether within this body or some other way, be in association of Krishna in serving Him. And that we do, of course, through at this time, we through to our spiritual master and through other devotees. So, in that respect, we serve any devotee, you know, definitely more so for senior devotees, but even a newcomer, I I want to recollect here in once. I was very intrigued because um, years ago, uh, I used to attend uh, the Festival of Inspiration in New Brindavan. I think in one of the uh, festival, they were talking about how devotees should behave, how to uh, do their service. And one senior devotee was mentioning is that he would rather spend more time with the newcomer, a devotee who has come newly, okay, or even as a visitor, is that he would rather serve him, serve him and uh, take care of his needs. And his explanation was, who knows, he may become a wonderful devotee later on. And I they have the opportunity to talk to him and take care of his needs. It becomes like uh, another, you know, one of our great leaders, you know, we have so many great leaders in our movement. So he um, maybe like, like Sri Naranjan Maharaj or, Radhanath Maharaj and Bhakti Marga Swami, and so many of them are there. So who knows, he may become a great person like that. So I, I don't want to miss this opportunity to serve him. I thought, you know, 
It's an interesting way of thinking. So serving as a newcomer is also pleasing to Krishna, in other words. So I would now stop here and ask for any reflection or any, you know, feedback. I would appreciate that. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you very much for your presentation. It was wonderful. So yes, please devotees, uh, we would love to hear your thoughts, your realizations, perhaps any questions that you might have. And uh, you can raise your hand. There's a little reactions button at the bottom of the screen there. You can press that and then raise hand. And as their hands go up, we can take the comments and questions and realizations perhaps in order. Raja has her hand up. Go ahead, Raja. Hare Krishna. Thank Hare Krishna. you so much. Um, and for, you know, serving us so nicely by speaking and giving your association. And, um, you know, I was talking to Ishri earlier today, and we were talking about this concept of, you know, mercy versus um you know justice or, or this type of of concept and um you know which is which is more uh important or which which one we should choose in different things of always being compassionate or trying to um you know enforce something and and i was thinking that you know it depends on our role because and you were mentioning this thing about our role and we all have different roles and how important it is to know our role because, you know, in, in one way, it could seem harsh that I'm speaking to, um, you know, a child in a certain way or, or the boys or something. But on the other hand, if, if I don't speak, you know, firmly or harshly or, you know, you can't hit so-and-so and they have to learn this, then, and, and if I have this attitude of, you know, it's, I mean, sometimes it's like that, oh, it's okay, and they're a child, and it's a stage, but then it's my role to try to, um, you know, teach or direct or make sure that that behavior is not going on, but I guess, you know, is it, um, it it's my intention, so my intention is to, um, you know, teach them, to care for them, to love them, not that I want to prove something or I'm trying to control, and I guess in I wonder just, you know, how can we sometimes distinguish or, or um, understand what we should be doing, how we should be interacting with devotees? Because in one way, you know, the very advanced devotee is up to here and they see everything as Krishna's plan and everything as, um, as his mercy. And, you know, almost this uh, passive, it, it seems, you know, for somebody who's not there, it can just seem like this passive kind of um, action or or interaction. So how can we, you know, distinguish what is being, um, you know, proper and improper, as you're saying? Is it, is it, I don't know, can you, you said we have to know our role as devotees and and this is the, you know, keep coming back to that, I think, but is there another way that, Okay, let me uh, start with uh, one thing which uh, you have to do more often <laughs> as a mother of three boys <laughs> and growing up boys, young boys. Um, I think um, they're all under 10 for sure. So yes, uh, Prabhupada gives the example of his own father, right? Yeah, so, uh, Prabhupada was a youngster, you know, he also went through those stages, right? As a youngster, he was on, under, at the age of six, seven, eight, whatever, right? He might have done some you know, inappropriate things. So his father actually first gave him a hug. He told him, Abai, I love you. So like that, he expressed his love. And then he said, but what you did is not right. So because I'm interested, I have to tell you that, that it is not right. For you, for you to remember that, I have to make you remember, to show me, and then he gave a slap on his wrist. So then Prabhupada remembered that. So the, the, you know, Prabhupada actually used the thing also. Uh, he, when somebody did something 
in a, you know, that's somewhat careless. And then someone forgot to send something which was supposed to have been sent. And that letter was still sitting there and he forgot his security and then, and proper really got upset. How can you do that? I just gave it to you for you to do that. How can you do that? And that moment he showed that. And then, you know, and the devotee, I don't know, this personal secretary or personal servant, whoever it was. And then within five minutes, Prabhupada called him for something else. And Prabhupada was quite normal and peaceful and very, you know, welcoming and talking very properly. So he showed that, used that emotion of showing anger very appropriately for that moment. And he wasn't there. You know, he's just to make a correction. And he also told, I, I, have, to, I have to correct you. Because that's my job as a spiritual master, I have to do that. So when you do this as a duty, without mixing up anything, so the, oh, I find this, I have to do this. As mother, I have to do this. Okay. But when you are dealing with the devotees and devotees, so there you need to stop and think, you know, what is going to do? And it may be perceived. Okay. So therefore, then according to it, it may vary, you know, some I mean, unique cases are there. But then the, the, uh, the, the important point is you don't want to leave the other person feeling bitter. If you, if you explain everything in a very nice way to make the other person understand what was the issue and how it impacted you. If you make him understand, very often the devotees say, oh, is that right? Sorry. And I made a mistake there. So they will readily accept. But there may be other type of personality also. Maybe, you know, so what's wrong in that? And if, they, if they don't see that, you try to tell them something which, you know, obviously it impacted you, so you wanted to, them to know about it. But, you know, then you don't want to leave it either bitter in your mind or in the other person's mind. You forget that. So you go ahead. But if it happens second time again, you know, it's like then you say, Prabhu, uh, uh, it happened like this last time and they, I, I think it happened again. I'm wondering why is why is it why is it you know your uh, yes. you know your approach to me why is it has been like this? So you can ask genuinely what, what was the problem there and try to resolve. The idea is to resolve it quickly, but without leaving anything you know um, bad feeling in either other person or within you. So hopefully that. Uh, uh, I, another thing also, of course, you definitely pray to Lord because when a difficult thing comes, difficult situation comes, when we are not really fully figuring out what it is, we definitely ask for the Lord's help and don't retort right away. Very often people say, you know, these days with uh, you know, social media, there's a tendency to right away send an email or something like that. You want to face that person, you send an email, right? But don't send it. If you want to send the email, write it, but don't send it right away. Sleep over it next day morning, you look at it again and say whether it is what you sent or not. Maybe often it may not be. But you still you think, okay, maybe I need to do make some correction here. So I, I don't want to come so um, like making a mountain of a molehill, as they say. So I mean, exaggerating it or is, what is it and what is my feeling now? I was in the heat of the moment. I felt like this. Now I'm a little bit cooled off and then what I'm thinking now. So you, you'll be able to deal with it accordingly. So the idea is we are still under the influence of uh, the modes of nature, right? Uh, anger is still there. Uh, I know for myself, <laughs> I have to do a lot of work on that. So it is there. Uh, so we need to be careful about our emotions so that it doesn't um, become an impediment in our path. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Are there any other uh, hands? Any other questions? Oh, Rupal. Mother Rupal, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was really nice. And uh, I just wanted to thank you. And one thing which struck me was when you said that we need to help new devotees. So I just wanted to thank you that you have really uh, lived what you say. So you have helped me to um, associate uh, with Krishna consciousness and it is helping me. So I just wanted to um, extend my uh, deeply felt thank you to you. Uh, Hare Krishna, that is all. 
Thank you, Rupal. Actually, you are surprising me, actually. I should say that. <laughs> you are picking it up so quickly. And I'm very happy to see that you're going to give some Bhagavatam class. You know. <laughs> I... Very happy to know that. And I think that enthusiasm, your enthusiasm actually impacts me and it makes me enthusiastic. So I also want to thank you for being so enthusiastic about devotional service. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. thank you very much. I think we have a uh, comment from, from Paramahamsa Prabhu. There's a question. Hare Krishna Prabhu, thank you so much. Thank for you. a wonderful presentation. Prabhu, it, uh, it kind of provokes some thought in me. Uh, you know, I was thinking about this verse from, from, uh, from Nectar of Instructions. Bacho vegam, manasa kroda vegam, jiva vegam, udaropasta vegam, etan vegam, yo visha heta dira, sarvam apkimam pitivim sa shisha, which says that a sober person who can tolerate the urge to speak the mind's demands, the action of anger, and the urges of the tongue, belly, and genitals is qualified to decide, to make disciples all over the world. So basically, this is the person that you described that would be able to avoid sins and committing offenses. And I'm just thinking about myself. <laughs> I'm thinking about a lot of people in, you know, in Kali Yuga that are by default wired actually not to do these things that they act they we tend to speak before we think we tend to you know let our senses run us so you know what what's what's the hope for us not to commit offense and not to like what is the way out because the person you describe is the person perfect person that can avoid these doing these things but here this person is described as the one who can make disciples all over the world but we are not, I mean, I can speak for myself. I'm not the person. What is the hope for me? How, how can I proceed, you know, to, to, to actually not to be completely, to, to somehow make a progress? Prabhuji, I, I think I, I can relate it easily because I'm in the same boat and maybe we are sitting in a different part of the same boat somewhere. So I'm facing the same thing. Um, our, uh, Guidance is actually to listen again and again, and uh, uh, whatever Sita Prabhupada has given us the basic fundamental process of chanting and uh, doing our devotional activity. And it is not that we will be completely free from the uh, anger and some desire to have uh, a little comfort in life. So it's not that we are becoming fully detached at this time, but what we are focused more on making further progress so by Krishna's grace, Krishna says that if you continue with associated devotees and exchange, I'm sure you are doing this Prabhu, uh, thinking or talking about him. As Krishna says in the, the four common verses, you know, the, the, the uh, Chatusloki Bhagavatam. So they, how they associate, they uh, talk about me, they talk about my past time. So they are enlightening each other, talking about me. So like this, and then for such people, he says that I am, I give them the dadami buddhi yogam, so Krishna says, I give the understanding by which they come to me. So, and then he also says, I am living in the heart. I, with the lamp of knowledge, drive out the ignorance. So Krishna becomes our friend. He actually helps us to get over this. And we have simply have to have the intention that I'm still stuck in this. So how am I going to get out of this? And just like uh, as you are revealing like the Prabhu, so, but we do the same thing. We, we, we you know, tell Krishna, this is the predicament I am in. You please help me out. So when we make that prayer, you know, as I was mentioning that it is a very, prayer is a very nice tradition I found in the Christian faith. There, they spend so much time in isolation, they do this prayer. I'm not saying that we have to be in isolation, but sometimes we have to be on our, by ourselves and it happens, right? Um, somehow there is time for us to be by ourselves at that time. So we make this prayer and that I think the prayer by the grace of the Lord will get over this attendance is Prabhu because they are again the modes of nature, isn't it? So if you come and analyze Krishna says, 
is the modes of nature. So the modes of nature actually uh, binds us to this material life. So, but Krishna says again, by my grace, we will get over this material nature, okay? Devi Ashaganamayi, Mama Yadurthya, Mama Yadurthya, Mama Yadurthya, I, I will release you. So our hope is basically, again, going to Krishna and making our a special request. Maybe you have to do it again and again. So maybe my, I find it that situation because I think that I have not done it with enough sincerity. So I have to do it with more sincerity the next time around. So I hope to, but I, my, I put my complete thing in what Krishna says, Sukhrutam Sarabhutana. I am your supreme benefactor. When Krishna said that, that's what it is. So my faith is that he is our supreme benefactor, not just me. So I add a little bit of prayer. You know, when you say you are supreme benefactor, all living entities, I think I am part of that. So please don't forget I am part of that all living entities. So I'm also yours. So you please help me. So I kind of add that a little bit for my own satisfaction, so to say. So Krishna already knows that. So I add this. So I I simply turn to the Lord from what I can say the same thing. What I want, what I want, that's what I'm going to tell you too. So it is challenging, it is not easy. Kaliga is a situation is like that, but we are again and again in Kaliga. The, the only way is Hari Nam, Hari Nam, Hari Nam. So in whichever way we, we want to approach Krishna through Hare Krishna Mantra, you know, through some other prayer, often when we you know, read or sing the songs of the Acharyas, we see that how they have felt, how they have handled that. So they are already beyond all this, but they are, you know, having these songs coming out of the mouth is because it's for our benefit. So then when we sing the song, we can relate that. You say, oh, oh my goodness, he's actually talking about me. So I'm in that position, actually. I, my status is that. So I'm very thankful for, you know, coming across that song for that great person who is saying, for the Acharya who gave us the song. So, and it's our heartfelt, you know, prayer, Prabhu. So we, I'm sure you're already doing this and we want, we want to have it clarified by me. But uh, thank you. That's uh, very thought provoking for me. I think it's, um, it's relevant, it is relevant. Thank you very much, Prabhu. In my you that get back to Krishna for everything. Time and again, we have to run to him, isn't it? So, in fact, Rupa Goswami said the same thing, you know, take any excuse to approach Krishna. And I, I think I'm not doing it enough because I know for myself that I'm not doing it enough. I think I should be doing it more often so that I can feel the proximity of Krishna. The more often I do, I feel more, I'm, my, myself is more closer to Krishna. So I, I think that will definitely help. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for the wonderful questions and, uh, and the realizations, comments. Thank you again, Guru Prashad Prabhu for for uh, being able to see your face and uh, for, for sharing some wisdom with us. And uh, we look forward to, to having you join us again right, and hear from you again, hopefully shortly soon. And uh, I guess the beauty of it is that uh, Guru Prashad Prabhu, although he's, he's in Ottawa right now, he's in New York at the same time. So somehow while being away, yeah, we, we have the good fortune of having Prabhu here with us today. So I'm thankful for this in this sense. I think there's one uh, silver lining in this pandemic is that we figured out how to associate even you know, remotely online. Yes. I think we are getting a lot of benefit, I think, in that, uh, in that sense, uh, uh, we are able to see what's happening. I was able to witness the Abhishek in Mayapur and Nesma Chaturthasi day. So yes. it was very enlivening. So I think in that sense, it's uh, something which by Krishna's grace, we are able to uh, have this opportunity. Thank you for engaging me in some way. So it made me read a little bit more intensely, I should say that. So whenever you are trying to 
talking, we have to collect some material for that, isn't it? So that it helped. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna. So uh, dear devotees, we'll, we'll continue now with, with a little bit of kirtan. We'll have some kirtan and then a uh, few minutes of darshan, and then we will close the curtains and uh, hope that you will join us again next time. Shushagorni Tai Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.